Okay, so today I'm going to talk about the Applied Structural Equation Model for Academic Research Basic Concept and Practical uh, Applications. This is a very powerful method for research. Okay, <clears throat> so in order to understand what is the structural equation modeling, okay, you have to understand about the correlation analysis, multiple linear regression, principal component analysis, and then the last one is actually about the structural equation modeling. Okay, uh, since my background is actually that the uh, ergonomics, then uh, in here, I just would like to show like several topics in the uh, cognitive ergonomics, but um, actually you can apply SEM in all fields, many fields. Okay? Nowadays, I apply SEM in the consumer behavior and also macroergonomics, especially related to disaster uh, management. Okay, So let's go with the correlation analysis, right? Since everyone knows about correlation analysis, okay? Uh, Remember, if you have a certain far, certain you know, uh, several variables, you know, uh, and you would like to see the causal relationship, you know, the causal relationship. I would say like the connection between one variable with another variable. This is the simplest thing that you can do. <clears throat> you just do a simple correlation. Is there a correlation between the body temperature with the uh, COVID nineteen? Is there a correlation between the uh, Satu oxygen saturation with the positivity of the you know the COVID nineteen is there yes or no something like that one okay so later on you can see uh, how big you know what the connection it is okay so this is a very standard one as you can see uh, the correlation is always something like diagonal like this one uh, you know and if you would like to show the correlation uh, table just show one I would say like a, a one triangle you don't need to show both okay and you can actually. A run a correlation analysis using Minitab or SPSS, okay, uh, and or any other software, okay. Uh, it will be much faster if you use those those uh, statistical software, okay. And then, uh, as you can see in here, like the the beta value, you know, it can be positive and can be negative. Okay, in here, the highest one is actually this one. The connection, the highest connection, actually in here, is actually one parallax with the an F, but this is actually negative. So, oh. Uh, Negative and positive is actually quite possible in a correlation analysis, okay? Okay, now, if you have the correlation like this one, what can you do? You can do a multiple linear regression, okay? Usually in a multiple linear regression, you know, if you have those variables, okay? Uh, if you would like to make a certain mathematical equation, okay? Uh, that's why usually that the multiple linear regression, okay? Uh, if you use that one, the title usually like a predicting something, predicting uh, a certain y uh, using certain x okay using uh, predicting uh, you know predicting independent one dependent variable using several independent variables okay that's what we call multiple linear regression this is just a simple one this is multiple linear regression okay since this is not multivariate class i will not explain to the very details uh, about this one unless you enroll in a multivariate class. Okay, I will explain about that one. But anyway, uh, the limitation of multiple linear regression is like you cannot predict one y, uh, uh, sorry, more than one y at the same time. So here you have to, uh, I would say, uh, you have to run it twice. Okay, If you would like to predict a different y using the uh, same in, uh, dependent variables, okay? uh, depend uh, the same independent variables okay and the second limitation is actually you cannot see the causal relationship okay between this uh, two uh variable for example this is actually the grip strength the power of the the hand this is the gender this is the uh let's say this is the hand size okay is there effect of the gender to the grip strength yes is there effect of the hand size to the grip strength yes but is there effect of the gender to the hand size of course okay uh sorry for girls male is actually much stronger than all of you and then uh, uh because the gender you know what uh has an effect on the uh, hand size which subsequently uh you know lead to the grip strength but even male or female has the same grip uh, sorry same hand size for example like a 168 centimeter male with a, let's say uh 180 female Still, 168, you know, is still much stronger, you know, than the female one because uh, the gender itself usually has a, a high impact, you know, on the uh, uh, grip strength. Okay, so and those things you cannot use, you cannot find if you just use multiple linear regression. That's why you have to use another more advanced method. Okay, I'm not going to talk about these assumptions in details because this is uh, uh, unless your more unless your paper is actually about predicting something, you know. 
last term there was one student uh, he did a, some kind of like predicting the renewal contract of a certain platform a certain i was i, I forget erp platform i think or like uh inventory management platform i forget what was that one okay but uh he utilized binary logistic regression okay so he utilized a certain prediction a mathematical prediction to really uh you know figure it out what kind of factors that actually uh, uh led to the continuity of the contract you know you of using a certain uh, software and so on okay uh well this is actually another uh thing but i would not know you know explaining details about that one since this is a research method class. Okay, so now we talk about the factor analysis. Okay, uh, the third one before we go to the structural equation modeling. Factor analysis is actually we try to group a certain factors, you know, based on the Euclidean distance. What I mean is actually that, uh, for example, okay, uh, we can group all of you based on the similar uh, factors. For example, okay, uh, based on the several factors. For example, the hand size, you know, this is actually like hand size the uh you know body dimensions the leg size and so on so later on this variable you can you know these variables can be grouped into one factor perhaps we call it anthropometrics okay so this is actually belongs to one group okay and then factor analysis is different with the cluster analysis okay cluster analysis is actually clustering the people but factor analysis is actually grouping the factors or reducing the factors what i mean like this one for example, you have a certain variables okay, uh, in here. You have so many things, so many variables, and you got headache, like, uh, how can I do any statistical analysis? Can I just group you know, some of these uh, variables? Uh, you can utilize the, that one, factor analysis, or we call it uh, dimensions reductions, okay? Uh, or like, uh, we can call it like exploratory factor analysis. So later on, they will be in, you know, what, in which group they belong to. So as you can see in here, like, for example, ease of reservation, check-in efficiency, you know, and everything in here is actually belongs to one group. And spa, lobby, security, you know, it belongs to another group. And then, you know, you would like to try to see in here from these, all of these factors, you can group them into seven factors. Okay. And so on. You just would like to see what kind of group is that one. Okay. So for example, you have the data in your company that, for example, you have so many data and so you just would like to group based on the nature based on how, how similar it is based on the equidian distance. And then uh, uh, you can see later on how many groups, you know. But later on, the difficult part is like how you can give the new name in here. That's going to be difficult, okay? Now, those those three as actually not the important part. I would say like that's just the preliminary part. Then I would like to go to the hard part. It's actually the structural equation modeling. And I know, you know what, uh, uh, your skills, you know, all of you are not the same. Because some of you already, well, even some students actually already published a SCI journal, like uh, let's say Ralph already know, he, he knows about what is the structural equation modeling and so on. And some students perhaps that uh, this is your first time encounter, uh, you know, uh, about the SCM. But uh, I would like to talk about that uh, a little bit in details, okay? And SCM is actually uh, some books, uh, they mentioned it, it's actually a combination of factor analysis and the multiple linear regressions. What I mean is actually like this one. Okay, now remember, this is actually, let's say this is the gender, this is actually the hand size will affect the hand grip strength, okay? If you do something like this one, this is like exactly like the multiple linear regression. But what is the different? Now you can see this one. There is the, you know, they do some kind of like, this one is kind of like a predictive model, but at the same time, this one is actually kind of like a try to, see the correlations also between the gender and the group, uh, gender and the head size so basically it's just like that one okay now if you would like to add extra you can do it at the same time you know by using the you know adding one more x one more y or like two three four up to you it depends on you okay so basically like you can also see uh this kind of like uh, uh relationships okay don't worry about the software. If you would like to do this one, I can help you to run this, the, the program. Okay, I can help you, but you have to gather 250 data at least, you know, for this one, because that's uh, the, the, usually that's the hard part uh, for students. But nowadays, uh, you can utilize Facebook or anywhere. Usually my students, uh, they kind of like, uh, I don't know, they're actually quite good at gathering the data in a short period. Most of the, for example, even the senior high school students, you know, 
uh, one week they can collect actually 1,000 data. Uh, so uh, perhaps using the Google uh, Docs, uh, Google Form, you distribute that one, you get the data, and then I can run actually the, the help you to run, and then uh, you know uh, regarding the model. Okay. <clears throat> We can see also the full mediation or the partial mediation. What I mean in here, for example, like uh, let's say about HIV, okay? X and A, M, you know, they have a relationship and then M, have, suddenly they broke up and M has another relationship with Y, but Y actually got the in HIV, let's say from the X. So this is actually, but although Y and X, they don't know each other, but they actually connected through the M. So this is actually the same thing like a full mate. This is actually another concept of the full mediation, okay? But partial mediation, for example, this is like COVID-19, okay? X actually uh, uh, affect, you know, it's actually uh, giving the, transferring the coffee to M and also transferring the coffee to the Y. And then Y, at the same time, they actually got this one and then from the X directly like that one. So this is what we call the partial mediator. This is what we call the full mediator, okay? Now I'm going to talk about uh, the most difficult part in the uh, SEM. No, I would say not the most difficult, the most fundamental part of the structural equation modeling, okay? So later on in the, in the future, okay, if you are uh, a graduate MS program at Mapua, I believe that uh, all of you are very familiar with the structural equation modeling because you always see me twice, okay? At least you will see me twice in this master program. And I always explain about this method since this method is very useful. And some students actually like they try to utilize SEM for their master thesis, okay? So uh, in structural equation modeling, you can see uh, this is the circle, okay? The circle one. Okay, uh, this is the circle one and also the square. Something like a circle and also something like a square, like this one. A circle, we call it Latin. Latin for it. This one is Latin, okay, Latin. Or you actually can call this one as an observed variable because you don't have the data for this one. An observed variable. But this one is actually uh, the square one we call it observed variable, or you can get the data, or we commonly name this one as indicator. Okay, or the question, you know, the, the, the questions in your the questionnaire is actually the indicator. Okay, so the one that you feel like, I think, I think blackboard is easy, one to five. I think blah, blah, blah. Those are actually the, the, the indicators. Okay, and then this one is actually an observed variable. We call it the lab. Okay. We call it the Latin. Let me give you an example what is actually the Latin, what is actually the indicators. For example, my publication, this one. The construct, for example, understanding of COVID-19. Do I have the data of this one? No, I don't have the data of understanding of COVID-19. But this one, instead of uh, just asking, do you understand? Yes, no, you know, we I use the Likert scale, one to five. Uh, and this, you know, construct is actually being measured by several uh, indicators or several questions. And those are these five, okay? Like I do understand the transmission of COVID-19 and then one to five. I do understand the incubation period of COVID-19, one to five and so on. So these are what we call indicators, okay? These are indicators and this is actually uh, the Latin. Something that you don't measure directly, but this one, you measure that one directly, but you would like to see the connection between how good this indicator can represent this Latin, okay? So you would like to see, okay? Usually people in this one, you do what? You do average, right? In the past, in the PS, perhaps like, oh, we just use average, 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 and so on. But now since you are in MS program, you can go to the even more advanced method that you, that's actually, we call it the structural equation model in this one, okay? Now, I actually, uh, how do you say that? Uh, explain it a little bit fast, but uh, later on, I will upload this one to the YouTube and later on, you can actually, kind of like stop it and actually uh how is it that uh you can actually uh try to play it again okay so uh in here you can see there are two types of uh uh number okay two types of number the first in here is called factor loading or loading factor it's up to you which one you like okay loading factor or factor loading is actually how good this indicator can represent this latin for example, like that one, understanding of COVID-19. I have what? How many questions? 
five, right? So in here, there will be five questions in here, okay? So question one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And later on, you will see how, uh, you know, how good that question, you know, uh, can, uh, how good that question uh, can have a connection with the latter. And you can see that one from this number, we call it the factor loading. Okay, and factor loading is actually uh, higher than 0 0.5 is counted as uh, uh, significant, but usually, you know, uh, 0 0.7 is actually the, uh, you know, international standard, but now 0 0.5 is actually quite uh, tolerable, okay, 0 0.5. So basically like in here, SAT score, high school GPA and ACD score, these indicators are good are good indicators of the academic performance. So in here, you know, the academic performance is actually being measured by these three. And then these three is actually kind of like a, a good, uh, this is actually a good representations of the uh, this Latin variable, okay? This is actually what we call the indicators. But the connection between one Latin to another Latin, we call it the beta coefficient. This is like the beta coefficient, the same like the beta coefficient in a multiple linear regression. For example, here, 0 0.8. So uh, there is an effect of the intelligence to academic performance and the effect is, is actually as big as 0 0.8, okay? The value will vary between zero to one, the same with this one, okay? The higher, the better, of course. But uh, for the beta coefficient, okay? You cannot have a justification by only looking at the, the beta itself. You have to check the p-value. Okay, there is a p-value in the software later on, you know, that will show you whether this one is significant or not. But usually, higher than 0 0.20 is already significant. 0. Sometimes 0 0.15, sometimes as low as 0 0.12 is already significant, okay? The connection uh, between this one, uh, one Latin to another Latin. So later on, you can have, you can see actually these two values, okay, the, the beta coefficient to see the causal relationship among the uh, Latin variables. And another one is actually, you can see this number is actually the factor loading. Okay, uh, I will go a little bit uh, uh, harder, uh, you know, to all of you, okay? So uh, there is one study to see the effect of this one. See the cumulative disaster exposure, gender, and the protective decision model. So this is actually a protective decision model. This is the exposure, this is the gender. So they would like to see, you know, the story between these three, okay? The main idea is like, is there an effect of the exposure to the protective decision model? Is there the effect of gender to the protective decision model? So basically as simple as that one. And these two is actually being represented by several different indicators. So in here is like, for example, <clears throat> worry health. I worry about health, right? Let's say, okay, one to seven, because still, okay. I worry uh, about uh, economy and so on. So basically, you know what, in here, uh, you can actually, uh, you know, this PADM is actually being represented by these indicators. The same thing with this one. Okay, it's actually being represented for exposure. It's actually being represented by this one. <clears throat> and this number is actually the factor loading. In here, as you can see, like this is good, this is good, this is good, and the rest is uh, the rest are actually bad because lower than zero point five. So you can eliminate those. And then this one, for example, this is bad. Uh, zero point four six. This is bad. So like one, two, three, four. These are good questions. You know, uh, good questions uh representing the exposure okay and this is the effect of the exposure to the padm it's like actually like a uh look at this one this is actually a uh, uh minus so it means that it's negative okay and this one is like gender also has a significant effect to the padm and in here uh they call it female female is actually dummy coded uh as uh, what is that is this one or two i don't know this one Let's, if they say like this one, perhaps like male is actually has more tendency to the PADM, okay? Gen you can put gender in, your, in, in this one. Okay? It depends on how you put the dummy code. If the dummy code in here, let's say one is male, two is female, and in here is positive, it means that the female has the higher effect on the PADM. If it is negative, then it means male, but it depends on you know how you dummy code this one. You have to say which one is uh, your uh, dummy code, okay? What I mean dummy code is like, Male, you put it one or two, you know, it depends, you know, that's a nominal, but nominal data, right? But later on in the software, you have to define it clearly. What's number one and what is number two, okay? I know perhaps all of you right now kind of like a little bit uh, explode, but anyway, I will just go uh, through later on, you know, 
uh, it takes time for all of you to understand about the structural equation modeling. And for those who already get used to this one, uh, you can continue, I would say, like sharpening your skills about the structural equation modeling, okay? And then this is actually another term. We call it the exogenous and endogenous, okay? What I mean with exogenous is like a Latin that is actually not uh, being influenced by other uh, Latin variables. For instance, this one, cognitive and family, okay? So this one is actually, it's not, you know, there is no arrow towards these two Latin variables. So uh, no two Latin variables in those two. So this is what we call exogenous. Okay? And this one is actually because this one being influenced by family, this one being influenced by cognitive adjust and also family, although this, was, this one is actually indirect. There is no direct. This is indirect okay? or mediator. This is the full mediator. Okay, But this two is actually counted as the, uh, endogenous uh, Latin variables, okay? These two, because being affected by, uh, you know, other Latin variables, okay? Okay, and these two is just like the correlation analysis between these two. We call it covariance, okay? In, in, okay, covariance, okay? And then uh, these are the indicators and these are the, the Latin, okay? These four are the Latins. And then the 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 arrow from the lat uh, the arrow of the factor loading and the, the beta, uh, you know, uh, are different. The factor loading is actually from the Latin towards the indicator, but this one is actually, uh, you know, from the Latin to the Latin and so on. But it, it, sometimes it can be something like this. One. This one is not factor loading. Okay. This one is actually different because this one are factor loadings, but look at that one, you know, the path, you know, the head, the, the, the head of the arrow, the, these two are different. So this one is actually the beta coefficient. This is actually the factor loading because this is from the Latin to the indicators. This is actually from indicator to the Latins, but uh, sometimes it can be from Latin to indicators, but uh, those are different things. Let me, I can show it to you later. Okay, uh, well, this is actually a little bit complicated. Uh, anyway. Uh, if this is this is actually indicator, so you can get the data. You can combine it with uh, Latin like this one, but this is very experimental cognitive ergonomics. I will not explain you in details. Uh, this one is actually you can later on you can see there is a direct, indirect, and total effect. For example, the direct effect it is like this one. This is the direct. This is the direct. But is there effect of the environment to the symptoms? Yes, can be. Just imagine this is COVID-19, okay? Uh, let's say let's say this one, this is COVID-19. Let's say ID with the symptoms. Is there the effect of ID to the symptoms? Yes. Indirect through this person as the mediator, as the full mediator. So you can see like this one. You know, this one gives an effect to this one and this one gives effect to the symptoms. So is there effect from the this person to the symptoms? Yes. So we can see that one later on in the... Uh, uh, you know what, in the SCM. Okay. <clears throat> and then uh, uh, later on, you need to, I would say, like uh, tabulate the data like this one. Let's say participant number one, two, three, four, five, and so on. This is like question one, question two, question three, question four, and so on. So basically, this is the way how later on you need to uh, uh, tabulate uh, the data. Okay. And for SCM, uh, we can see several, uh, several, uh, how you say that, uh, several uh, indexes that you can see whether that model is actually good or bad. Basically, there are these five, you know, NFI, TLI, CFI, GFI, and AGFI. Okay, these five are actually like the the, the most common indexes that uh, widely utilized to really uh, justify whether the model is actually good or bad. Okay, and then um, the higher the better, of course. Um, uh, this one is like the same like R square, the R square in the multiple linear regression. The, the the higher it is, the better it is. Okay, and then for the GFI and AGFI, it's like the same like uh, uh sorry, R square and adjusted R square. So these two are actually quite similar. Okay, and then the difference between these two uh usually should be less than five percent. So this one is less than five percent. So this is actually quite good. And R, um, RMSEA is actually like the, the, you can see the residual or the garbage, you know, uh, how, how, you know what, how big it is. And here is actually quite small. It's actually lower than 0 0.07, okay? So this usually like one, two, three, four, five, and then add with this one, six. These are 
the common uh, always are like uh, uh, indexes uh, that actually being utilized to justify whether your model is actually good or bad. The same like R square in the multiple linear regression. Where you get this one from the software. You can get it from the software. We will utilize AMOS later on. Another term for the structural equation modeling, okay? Uh, this is actually, we call it the confirmatory factor analysis. But what's the difference between structural equation modeling and confirmatory factor analysis? Uh, the difference actually like this one. For structural equation modeling, there is a causal relationship. For example, where is the X, where is the Y? But in this kind of, uh, you know, uh, this kind of the figure, there is no X, there is no Y. So in here is kind of like the high degree of correlations, but you put uh, three Latins like this one, you know, for those uh, indicators, okay? So those indicators belongs to resilience. Uh, these two belongs to exposure. This one belongs to sensitivity, okay? This is a study that I conducted in Marinduque. I, uh, I was very fortunate to have uh, access to 53,000 data and I utilize this one. And of course, this is published, you know, quite fast in a top journal because that's a very, I would say that the uh, high quality data, the, you know, can you imagine, you know, you run the data like 53,000. <laughs> Actually in the Philippines, there are many things that uh, you can publish. Okay. okay, now this is like the structural equation modeling. Okay, uh, uh, but this is, should be oval instead of the square because these are the indicators. Okay. You can see like this one, they actually would like to see uh, the impact of the climate disaster and the integration of adaptive flood risk management. So this Latin is actually being represented by several different indicators. Okay? And you can see this one is actually the beta coefficients. And you can see how the causal relationship among these Latin variables, okay? the connection or the story between these Latin variables. Okay? You have four exogenous, and those are risk perception of climate disaster, previous flood risk experience, subjective norms, and also the government and society. This one is actually the intention to participate in flood prevention activities. And this one is actually the real behavior or participation in flood prevention activities. So we'd like to see you know, how you know, these four exogenous variables can affect the, you know, these two in endogenous variables. And later on, you can see this one, standard loadings, or we call it the factor loading. Okay, how good, you know what? Uh, for example, this one, subjective norm. In here, subjective norm, okay? How many questions under subjective norm? How many? One, two, three, so we have three. And then uh, this like, I will feel ashamed if blah, 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 and so on. So this is actually being measured by one to five or one to seven Likert scale, that those up to you. And those are actually uh, quite good. And here you can see the factor loading is actually quite high, higher than 0 0.5, so it means like, uh, these indicators are good indicators, you know, to represent the subjective norm or the, you know, governments and society and so on. And another one, if you do the questionnaire, there is another question, uh, sir, what about the reliability of the questions? Okay, we can do the reliability test okay? later on uh, uh, in the software, we can get uh, this number too. If higher than 0 0.7, it means like the questions quite reliable. Okay, so although like you collected 250 and so on, although like one is actually quite lazy to answer those questions, later on you can double check how big, you know what, the reliability of those indicators. You can get the numbers, okay? Uh, this is like what I told you before. Uh, we can do some kind of like experimental data or if you have the company data, perhaps like, a, I don't know, uh, is there something like this one? I've, I've never done this one for the company data. So, okay, now this is the most important things uh, for this class, okay? Since this is actually that the research method class, uh, I would like to tell this one, okay? Uh, how we are going to conduct uh, some kind of like data collection, you know, uh, for this class, okay? So, the acceptance of mobile application, this is actually a good topic uh, or a hot topic like Grab, mobile banking, you know, uh, fitness related, okay, or like ANCAS, you know, and so on, okay. These are, are actually a great uh, research topic, but I, of course, I've, I've done those topics and most importantly, I've published those topics, okay. So now, for example, you have a nice uh, mobile application, for example, like the currency, I don't know, I these days I use what, a dictionary, dictionary for what, I don't know, okay, no. I only use the common thing is actually the e-commerce, the mobile banking, 
and then some kind of like uh, yeah standard social media uh, how is that mobile apps okay but anyway if you would like to utilize this technique okay the first thing that you need to do is actually this one you decide what theory you use there are thousands of theories there, there are so many theories you know about the uh, that utilize the structural equation modeling okay for example the theory of planned behavior technology acceptance model uta ut2 protection motivation theory that's technology fit. There's so many theories, okay? So that's why, you know what? You have to read first before you collect the data. What kind of theories you use for if you would like to use structural equation modeling? Again, this one is actually for those who will uh, utilize uh, structural equation modeling that we will collect around 250 data. And then you have to specify your originality or like what's, what's new in your model, okay? Later on, I will talk about this one uh, in details when, I, when we will do the individual consultation, okay? Uh, you have to highlight what's what's new in your model. You add one new latent variable or the issue is quite new. For example, uh, you use uh, the same thing. For example, you use mobile application, let's like say the uh, food panda, but it's actually during the COVID-19 pandemic. So that's quite new. Although the model is, for example, you use the technology acceptance model, but the, the idea is actually during the COVID-19 pandemic, that is still the origin, you know, one, uh, new or like one original uh, idea that you can propose in your model, okay? And for the data collection, uh, at least you get 250. Usually that's the, the minimum standard for the, uh, you know what, for the structural equation modeling, okay? But don't worry about the next one for the running the model. I can help you. I have a personal assistant also who will help me to double check the model and so on. And this is the most important part in this class. You have to write and also uh, you have to present that one in an international conference or in, you just publish that one to a journal, okay? Depends on the quality, okay? But anyway, everybody knows that the journal is much higher, you know, the level is much higher compared to the, the conference, okay? So for those who would like to use the structural equation modeling, how, how you can construct the research gap or the originality of your study, okay? First of all, you have to read, okay? This is, um, uh, although this is like an online master degree program, but when you are in the master degree program, uh, you have to read the journals or you have to read papers to really compare about uh, what are uh, what other people or what are other industries are doing related to your topic. So I will force everyone to read. And later on, you will know how I force you to read, you know? I will say like, oh, this is not enough. The, 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 anyway, it's not enough what I mean, like uh, the way you compare, it's actually not enough in the introduction or in the discussion, okay? Uh, don't worry, later on you will know how I uh, criticize that one. So uh, the thing in here, uh, you, need to, uh, you need to read, okay? Several journals. And uh, this is actually one example how uh, I did to really summarize, uh, you know, summarize my study. So I write, uh, you know, the name of the journal, the title, the year, because sometimes like the idea is actually quite not new, it's quite cold. The country where, for example, in Saudi Arabia, Iran, and so on, you know, for example, they study that one, but no study is actually in the Philippines. You can actually highlight that one as your research gap, okay? And this is what I call the, the I would like to say, this is actually the theory or the conceptual framework. There are a lot of things, a lot of models, a lot of models, okay? For example, the DNMI success model. This is one, actually one a very famous model. Now do I like extended technology acceptance model. ITM is information, I forget what is ITM, okay? And these are the Latins. This is are the Latin variables that they use in the study. So later on, you can make your own original, I was like, like originality of your study can be a combination of this Latin from previous, so from several previous studies, okay? So you can actually try to see whether, uh, you know, this Latin is actually quite good for your study, okay? This is one model. <clears throat> this is, should be oval or square, okay? Yeah, sorry, instead of square, it should be oval. So in here, you will see that uh, this is actually the technology acceptance model created by Dr. Davis, okay? So this is actually like the, how people kind of like uh, uh, perceive or how can people actually like a, uh, a process, how people can actually uh, use that technology. So since those are Latin variables, okay, so you will see several different uh, indicators under, under those Latin variables. Again, and then you can later on, you know what, one Latin, it depends. 
but this is actually too much. Usually when I read the journal, okay, one Latin is actually being represented by five indicators or six indicators, that's already a lot. Okay, five or six quite quite already a lot. Okay, for one indicators. Imagine if you have something like this one. How many questions that need to be answered by the 250 respondents? That's quite a lot. Okay. If you have something like this one, it's quite a lot. Okay. So if it's something like this one, then uh, you know what, for this Latin, okay, this is the standard technology acceptance model. But if you can call this one extended, it's actually you try to add several different Latin variables, you know, in the in the model, and you would like to see the causal relationship, how this extended uh, TAM can affect the actual system use. For instance, you add one thing, it's like what? Understanding of COVID-19. Perhaps understanding of COVID-19 is actually will trigger you to use a certain mobile application. For example, Stay Safe Philippines. Okay, that's a, uh, you can do perhaps, okay? Try this one, driver's acceptance. See, look at that one, a journal. Driver acceptance. And what's the, what kind of theory? Look at that one, an extended technology acceptance model. See, by looking at the title, all of you know that this, this study, you know, utilize the technology acceptance model. This is the original technology acceptance model and these are the external variable external or like new latent variables that they use okay and uh, how you measure this one is actually by this one for example the navigation ability is actually being represented by these three indicators for example i would miss mobile app navigation application when driving without it one to five you know and this is actually like a using lookup scale one to five and so on so how many questions here not so many perhaps around 20 this one is actually perhaps around uh, 20, I would say that uh, 20 questions, okay? <clears throat> so uh, later on, you know, when you develop a questionnaire, I don't want someone from IE to use yes, no question. It's like, uh, do you like the software? Is it useful? You know, that's not the master degree level, okay? Uh, especially from from school of IEMG, you know, at uh, our level is so high at this point. <laughs> so. Uh, I don't want to see someone from IEMG will do that. It's better for us to use, uh, you know what, a Likert scale, one to five, and then later on we can do more analysis. Either you use the structural equation modeling or you use the uh, multiple linear regression, depends on the case, what's your goal of your study, okay? Uh, this is another one, look at that one. This is technology acceptance model of mobile library applications, okay? So this one is actually for the technology acceptance, using the technology acceptance models. And then uh, these are the indicators. Uh, these are the Latin variables. Look at that one, perceived use of fullness, perceived ease of use, because this one is actually from the extended TAM. Okay, and uh, they have, uh, they actually quite, they try to modify the old TAM into the thing that uh, that's suitable for them. For example, look at that one. Using Insigna ILS, so oh, this is the name of the mobile library application. In my academia, would enable me to access the library more quickly, one to five, and so on. Okay, some students they're like, "Oh, sir, if you, I, if I do this one, nobody will answer, you know, my questionnaire. Then if nobody answer that question, then don't do that topic, you know. Then you can just change to another uh, topic. The if you want to do SDM, you have to enter the pain that the uh, you have to collect that many data, and the respondents need to answer those, you know, what the uh, uh, quite tremendous, you know, uh, the 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 questions." And this is the techno, uh, sorry, theory of planned behavior. <clears throat> okay, another model. Uh, the first is actually a technology acceptance model, right? This is, I'm going to talk about the another behavior. It's actually, we call it theory of planned behavior. It's actually how uh, the process of uh, uh, someone is actually uh, engaged to a certain behavior. Can be anything, healthy behavior, uh, can be the green behavior, can be that uh, how you buy the solar panel, can be like how you use the electric vehicle. You know, there are so many, uh, you know, I would say thousand, thousand of studies. I think there are more than 40,000 studies about the theory of plant behavior. It depends. Can be like uh, how you use what, electric smoke or so on. You know, there are so many things that you can do, okay? And these are the standard, but nowadays people can, the same thing like TAM, they can try, they try to modify uh, the Latin okay, from the original one. The original one is like attitude, subjective norm, perceived behavior, control, intention, and the real behavior. And this one is actually being measured by what? You're of course being measured by several different indicators under this Latin variable. Okay, this is the extended one. For example, uh, okay, this is like one, two, three, four, five. This is the original and they can add, you know, several different, for example, like a, uh, uh, 
theory of flat year how someone you know what uh, uh, to what do election after this one the philippines will do election right <laughs> You can do is the theory of planned behavior. For example, that uh, what kind of behavior that uh, uh, how how you know what the process someone can actually really vote. You know you can use this one. You know, another one is actually green consumer identity. See, it's very simple, right? Attitude, subjective, not perceived bear of control to the purchase intention of sustainable housing. Okay, sustainable housing. Okay, they put this one green consumer identity. What are the questions under this one? Yeah, you read the publications. Okay. Again, you have to read, read, and read. Okay, spend time, and later on, you know that's why you know when before, if someone wants to enroll the PhD, let's say Ses, <laughs> uh, is this is here or I forget. Oh, yes, Ses is here. Yes, sir. Okay, so later on in the doctoral degree program, you will know like uh, the details or like the distinctive. Okay. Uh. uh anyway, your copywriting. Uh, uh. Uh. Give me more time. Okay, I will submit it. Okay, give me time. Okay, I'm quite busy with uh, the other things. Okay. Right. So, for example, this is my study. Uh, it's very funny that this study is actually my best publication over my career, the whole career. Although this one, uh, not my, for me, you know what? It, it, it's, I, I'm happy about, you know, I published this one, but uh, I, I never thought that this one is actually that uh, uh, would be my best paper so far in my entire career so this is actually i would like to see what kind of the behavior uh, how actually that the people can perceive the effectiveness of the prevention measures of covid 19 pandemic so i i utilize two different theories okay the first is actually protection motivation theory these two it's actually when you know about something you feel severe and when you feel severe you do a certain behavior so when you understand COVID-19, you feel so vulnerable and severe. And this one will lead you to a certain behavior. That is, this is the theory of planned behavior. I extend it to adapted behavior and actual behavior. And then the final one, I using this one, see? Because the, we, we call it extended theory of planned behavior. So that's why I add several Latin variables. And these are the extra Latin variables. And I think in total, I had 63 questions or 64 questions. I forget, around 60 something questions for one participant. And I collected 600 participants in four days. 600 something in four days. So that one is actually, uh, but it, it, I was not alone, right? And all of them are actually just a BS students, you know? Uh, perhaps if you graduate from IEMG, you, you know the, the names, you know? Uh, some are basketball players, some are, you know, <laughs> they're quite famous. Yeah. And this is actually another publication that I did for the online food delivery. Okay, uh, so in here I utilize the same thing with the theory of planned behavior, and eventually I figured it out that uh, the hedonic motivation, the information quality, the price, and the promotion are the keys for uh, the satisfaction of and loyalty uh, of the online food delivery. Okay, so it's not about the usability. It's not about the perceived ease of use, and because of the you afraid that you have you use it. It's actually because more because of the hedonic motivations, and then because of the information quality and you know the price and the promotion. These are you know this this will lead you to the you know you satisfy to use uh, the mobile the, the grab or the food panda and so on. This is uh, I don't know who will utilize UTA UT two because I think uh. I think uh, uh, Ralph, Ralph, you use UTA UT2, right? For your uh, Ralph actually used UTA UT2 for his study, okay? Uh, about the medical, uh, I would say that uh, he actually would like to see uh, the medical e learning platform. So the respondents are actually medical doctors, okay? I think he collected something and then I continue to collect more uh, because I had a connection with uh, some of the medical doctors in the Philippines. And then after that one, then I would like, uh, I forget at the beginning was like 100 something and I, I added up to 300 something okay, in uh, uh, because I need more respondents for that one. And then we utilize uh, what kind of uh, factors that influence the usage of the e-learning platform. And there are some Latin variables. Well, you can actually, uh, check the uh, publication in the uh, uh, MBPI. This is another uh, publication, uh, me with my MEPIE student. Oh, this is journal, you know? So if one student from MEPIE, uh, they can publish in the journal. So I believe that, uh, well, it depends on you, of course, how far you want to sacrifice your time for a journal. I know some of you just want to pass the class and get a grade, but uh, be careful for the batch 2021. 
since you have to at least to have two journal publications for the in order for you to graduate okay uh, and if your paper is just for passing the class i will not submit that to a conference so you have to sacrifice more you know for your other courses and you have to have two you know in order to graduate otherwise you will not get your original diploma okay <clears throat> and for the old batch only one right? all the batch only one can be from this class can be from your master thesis okay and then uh, uh, another one uh, i think one of you use surf wall who is that i think the x you use surf wall diva surf wall okay okay <clears throat> Okay, another one, another model is actually surface quality, or we call it surf wall. Okay, and surf wall consists of five Latin variables, and those are tangible, reliability, responsiveness, assurance, and empathy. Okay, and this actually belongs to the surface quality. Uh, and uh, this this person is like this guy is actually uh, he's working at the Toyota in the Cavite, and he would like to see. Uh, what kind of factors that influence someone uh, that influence the satisfaction of uh, of the after sale service? For example, like changing the oil, changing the uh, adding the gas. I mean, uh, checking your car and and so on. So it's actually about the the things for the car. And he collected around 200, 200 sorry, two hundred fifty. Yeah, two hundred fifty respondents. So actually, like every time when someone you know comes to his. Uh, uh, I was like to to his uh, I was to Toyota. He did the service and so on, and then he he delivered the questionnaire one by one up to two hundred and fifty. So the but it took him two months or three months, you know, to gather uh, to uh, I forget two months or or I, I, I don't know I forget. It's been a long time ago. <laughs> he graduated a long time ago, and then the model is actually quite maganda. And later on, I can figure it out that empathy is actually very important for after sale service, and I think that makes sense. Like someone like uh, the retention, for example, like uh, mom, sir, po, it's it's been several months, po. You have to change the oil, like that one. Those are the key important things for the customer satisfaction. Okay, uh, of course, for example, the cleanliness of the the of the uh, the Toyota is important and so on. But the most important is actually the empathy. The empathy is very important for the customer satisfaction. Oh, oh yeah, this. These three students they publish another journal, and this is actually another one we call it uh, 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 in the drive-through fast food. But if you see this publication, there is no, I would say that the theoretical background. <laughs> so it's it's quite uh, it's quite funny that this one is actually uh, published in a very good journal too. But uh, there is no theoretical background for this uh, uh, publication. I just uh, try to make this lab and and I would like to see the causal relationship, <laughs> but. Uh, it's better for all of you to use the uh, nice, I would say, like, for example, theory of plant behavior or surf, or surf call and so on. Okay, there are so many things that you can do. This is the procedures. Later on from the Excel, we will transpose to the SPSS and then we will go to the AMOS. But don't worry, for these things, it's actually I can help. And I have one personal assistant that will help me. Okay. I know some of you are just, for example, uh, you just want to I mean, finish this class and I just want to, you know, submit one of your study in international conference, okay? But now I prove it that uh, some of you already at this level, okay? At this uh, SDI journal level, okay? Uh, this is, yes, journal, but there is another one. It's like a journal with the star, okay? So, for example, in here, we have uh, Ralph in here. Wow. You know what, Ralph? If you enroll in PhD, you can publish one more and you got a doctoral. Oh, God. You got a doctoral. <laughs> Degree, you know, you can be, you can be granted a, a doctoral doctor out. <laughs> okay, <laughs> if you, have, <laughs> you can have a okay, you can have a, 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 a you can be granted a doctoral. Uh, sorry, you can get a, a PhD in industrial engineering if you have to. Okay, <clears throat> okay. So for those who would like to, if you if you already get used to, the, you know, this publication, you, I'll just suggest you to go to the uh, SCR journal level. I know, but it depends. Some students, they like it, but but sir, I like international conference more, sir, because it's it's about presentation and you have the, you know, you dress up and you're part of many, like 20, 30 audiences. And then, uh, uh, but when I check the public, when I check the paper, okay, the level is medium. Uh, if you don't have time to add, in here, usually I will, I will, I will try to say. Usually, when the paper is good, I will challenge you to say, "Hey, can you add this, add that, add that?" 
but some students they disappear. It's like, so it's okay. I don't have time. Uh, why don't we publish in conference? Okay, then uh, we'll we just publish in a conference. Okay, that is also actual uh, no problem for me actually. And this is the okay. Start the thing that you're passionate about, and then uh, especially for the data, uh, you can use your company data for this class. It's fun. Uh, but uh, you can, you have to uh make anonymous okay the name you cannot mention the name uh but for uh let's say uh my student before justin he actually asked the his company uh his company the toyota and then the the companies actually agree okay uh the company actually quite agree it's like oh, it's okay you can put the name of toyota in the cafe in your paper yeah it's fine so he published that one the result is actually good you know and he gives a very real practical applications of what we can do from that model because you know, usually that I always face so many. Uh, uh, I always feel like uh, a little bit unhappy comments when someone says, "Oh, you're from academics. You cannot do anything from industry." So you're wrong. You know, I can give you so many suggestions too, from uh, based on the scientific data. So uh, based on that model, he actually uh, give very nice suggestions to the uh, the company. Okay, and then uh, with scientific, of course, you prove it with statistical uh, analysis and so on. Okay? Okay, okay, for master program, we have to be the main author or can be just a co-author? Can be co-author. Can be co-author is actually fine. Even the third one is fine. But for the doctoral program, your name has to be the first. Okay? That's why. If you want to go to the doctoral degree program, <laughs> we can, uh, I would say, if your paper is good enough, usually I will hold. I will hold, you know, one, three students actually like that one, you know, they say like, sir, can you just hold it first? You know, like, uh, uh, I will enroll in doctoral program. And when they enter the doctoral program, they got one already. So they just need to do the second one. But the second one is, uh, even so, doing that one is not easy. It, it's uh, usually the second one, it's much more, I mean, you get used to it, the feeling, but uh, to do those details again, but I don't know, Ralph, you already have one, right? I mean, you know the feeling, right? Is it that difficult, Ralph? Can you share? I, I would like to ask, uh, ask your personal uh, experience. Was that difficult? Uh, it takes a lot of time. Yes. <laughs> See? <laughs> See? The, 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 the answer is always the same, you know? Like, the most students after my class, they usually like, sir, I think thesis is You know, they say like it's not that difficult. Okay, for it's not difficult for the thesis. It's just time, takes time, a lot of time, <laughs> especially studying STM. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, you can determine the trends. Okay. For example, now we thought about what states in Philippines or what what other things election. Okay. Uh, recently I published about Bataan because I watched the news. Uh, every time when I watch the news, uh, another one I publish about that. I will publish about typhoon or the Taal volcano, you know, because I always watch the news. What's uh, uh, I got the idea. But I know for all of you, if you would like to do something meaningful for your uh, company, I can help. Last last term, you know what? The student is actually he's in Qatar or Dubai. I forget. Okay. <clears throat> uh, he actually kind, kind of like would like to use the predictive model for the new renewal of the contract care of the a certain uh, software and uh, he thought that the uh, one variable is the predictive one but i prove it scientifically with the statistical analysis it's not really significant and then he's kind of surprised wow that factor is not significant but another factor is actually quite i would say that the good predictor so yeah he gave a nice suggestion to the company and his company is actually very happy uh, to I was like to have that kind of uh, uh, suggestions, and I, we prove it scientifically using the mathematical model. Okay, <clears throat> and I'm here with you. Don't worry. You know I have experience, although I'm still young, but I have experience. Don't worry about that. And then, uh, yeah, just start doing it. Okay, just start doing the uh, the this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, the lastly, I would like to make this a little bit harder because I don't know why I feel that. Uh, uh, several students disappear after getting the grade okay and then the paper actually got accepted in an in international conference in, in mapua already paid that one but uh, uh just disappear because i already gave the grade okay so for this class okay i would like to make sure that all of you have the ppd first before i give you the grade okay otherwise uh you know what uh after giving the grade people will just disappear okay 
and it's not just one or two. There are many students like that. You know, after finishing my class, and then like uh, after I submit the the uh, the uh, after I give the uh, conference and got accepted and you know paid by Mapua and few day I, I keep contacting them and they just disappear. So in order to for me to you know what I don't want to shoulder so many things like that one. So. Uh, because for me, you know what, I, I don't need publications, you know, you need publications to, for you to, I would say I don't need conference publications, you know, uh, you need that one at least for you to graduate, okay, so uh, that's why, you know, this time that I, <laughs> I would like to make, a, I will make sure that you submit that one first before I give you the grade, okay, but don't worry, you know what, I'm, for the grade, I think I'm quite okay for giving the grade, you know, it's very rare for me to give a 2.00 in my, very, very rare, you know, unless you just submit uh, whatever you just want to submit, you know, in the class, okay? <clears throat> uh, that's fine, that's fine, and then that's fine. Okay, uh, regarding the structural equation modeling, uh, any questions? If you have questions, you can type, and I will just stop the recording, questions.